Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. Welcome back to another wonderful Wednesday here on The Family Room. We've got Dad back on the couch. Uh, Let's let go. us know where you're watching from again. Look, we already got Dwayne, Julie. I can't see YouTube yet because we got the announcements up. But, uh, yeah, let us know where, we're watching, where you're watching from. We're watching from live in uh, where we are. Right in the room. Uh, let us know. We're going to be discussing... Uh, Week five, episode five of Contend from Jude. The title was The Lord Comes. Mm -hmm. Uh, I realized I do uh, continue to not say the titles. Uh, I just get so focused on getting straight to work, I keep forgetting the titles. And like I literally write it down on top of the paper. Uh, But we're going to dig through that. So real quick, let's do the announcements. We have on November 23rd, coming up here in a few days, is the Saturday annual Friendsgiving potluck from four until, I think, six. Now, how is that going to work? From four to six? Four to six. So that's a good good thing. I don't know if anybody from the House of Prayer is here for Saturday Night Prayer. Kelsey and I were talking about it. What I think we're going to do is instead of rescheduling it and not canceling it, um, we'll start with just eating and fellowship mm-hmm. and then come out. And if you want to pray, we'll come out and All pray right. and then just go right back into doing it. And I think that would be a nice atmosphere. And right they can continue to do that. We can come out here and That's still bless idea. the building and then continue to fellowship right after. So if Invite you're everybody to bring a potluck, their favorite yeah. dish of some favorite kind. Favorite dish, favorite... Um, Dessert, whatever you know, whatever you want to bring. We um, provide all the drinks, yeah. the paper goods, the napkins, the forks, all that kind of stuff. I'm looking forward to it because you know it's always nice to, to have. Might a, be somebody who doesn't have family around, and it just is a nice way to get ready for the Thanksgiving holiday, or you just want to some time in community, spend some time with the church. Yeah, people. it's always nice to just fellowship. And that's a and great idea to invite them to come to Saturday prayer. Yeah, yeah. So we'll. Um, I need to put that in the uh, the prayer group on the app. Um, but yeah, that's our plan is just, you know, start wow. out eating there, come out and pray, and then go back and hang out for another hour, and we'll Don't call miss it, it that. Saturday, 4 to 6, it'll be great. I'm looking forward to that. And then December 1st is the next blood drive. That's a Sunday. It'll be directly following our Sunday service. They appear to, well, uh, they don't appear. They keep having really good success coming here. Uh, and I think it's great. And plus, since we're you know right here on 207, it's, it's good um, publicity for them as well. Big shout out to our congregation, man. Our, anytime food trucks... The food trucks and the blood drive and things like that that happen in the parking lot, man, they show up. Yeah. So, guys, thank you. The, the, the last time I was late getting out there to do the blood uh, donation, and they were just talking. They were just raving about the people that came and how nice they were, and, and it just they love coming here. So, thank you. Keep it up. I'm glad we have a we have a really good a really good body here, especially like. With that, and then like when we do the food trucks and supporting the local businesses, and, and now all they're that fighting to get here. Yeah, yeah, they like coming. <laughs> um, yeah, and and then you know if you are a food truck and, or you know a food truck that wants to get here, um, Kelsey doesn't really set. She goes through. I can't remember the mm-hmm. lady's name, but there's someone that's in charge of all the food trucks that kind of handles it for us, and we communicate back and forth. So. Uh, if I knew who that was, I would tell you who to contact, but that's with that. She'll see it and tell us. Yeah. The next, uh, dining with dignity is December 5th. That's where we feed the homeless downtown. That's five 30 till, um, whenever that ends. And all of this information again is on our website, familychurch.social slash events. The next women's fellowship, the last one for the year is December 12th. Uh, from 6.30 until, what is it, 8.30 or is it 7.30? I can't remember if it's an hour or two hours. It's about an hour and a half. Okay, hour and a half. Either way, that's theirs. Um, I did hear a little bit on that from, from Lauren on her ideas. That'll be a fun one. Anything, I love the Christmas They've season, got some so. great ideas coming up into the next year. Some things oh, yeah. that they're going to do, a, like a family wellness directive that they're going to start installing. You know we're moving into a different season in America right now, Make America great again, make America godly again, but also one of the things is make America healthy again. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. that. Yeah. Uh, although I do hope um, Oreos don't go completely away, because <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my my uh, my guilty pleasure kind of thing. Well, one is all right. Twenty is probably but not you, so the good. The problem is you can't eat one. <laughs> as soon eat as you whole start, sleeve. you eat the whole sleeve. There's no way you can stop. Especially with. Oh, yep. Have you ever had fried Oreos? 
<laughs> no. It's even, it's, it's worse. It's, it's delicious, but it's, I can't imagine how unhealthy That's what I saw a comedian one time, he was talking about the serving size is two <coughs> Oreos, and he's like, uh-uh, you got to have a whole sleeve. Yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. Uh, and then our, our second annual classic Christmas movie night, December 13th from 5.30 until, uh, that's usually just a couple hours where we show uh, a that few really old nice. movies. And we have popcorn, and I think last year we did um, hot chocolate and stuff like that. It was like very that. nice. Very that nice. That was night. a lot of fun. Don't miss that. The second annual Ugly Christmas Come on. Dinner is December 15th. That's a Sunday. Woo. Everybody get involved. That's a lot of fun. You got yours yet? No, I haven't picked out. I need to pick out a new one. Um, and I don't know what I'll do this year, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Except for how hot it was last year, but that's what Turn the air conditioner down. The, um, the Fire Youth Christmas Movie Night is December 15th as well at <clears throat> 6 p.m. And then our final... Other than, well, no, not our final. So then we have the um, Christmas Eve candlelight service that is on December 24th. Don't miss it. Um, I think what we'll do this year is, again, I think we were talking about doing 9 and 11 again to do to keep the double thing. Oh, you thing. want to do two? I think so because okay. the, it, it ends up being so packed. Good. Um, and we don't, even if we did one, it would still be in the morning because everybody wants to be like at dinner sure. or something and hanging out mm -hmm. with family instead of, well, I don't want to say instead of coming to church, but it's nice to do it and then you have your whole day to be with your family. Amen. And then the last one is the annual chili cook-off. Come on. Uh, December 29th, you know directly I following church. I think, didn't we say this one we're actually going to be doing yes. uh, the competition They're going to be judging. So if you are new to our church or if you've been here for a while and you're looking for something to do, November finishing out is going to be great. December is going to be a great busy month. If you're a church looking for activities for your church, just look at our website. They're all on there. You can do some really cool things. <laughs> looking forward to it. It's going to be a great finish to the it's year. It's going to be great. Glad to have you up in Sandy Ridge. Papa ja Pappy Jack in Vero Beach. Hey, man. <coughs> man. Welcome. Glad to have you. Don't know who that is, but we're glad to have you with us. Yeah, tonight. that looks like a, a, new, a new one. So yeah. we're glad to have you yeah. join us. Uh, for those of you, if you are new, Welcome to the family room. This is where we break down Sunday's message and uh, we dive a little deeper or we just go into other topics and just have, you know, a little, little family time here on the couch and interact with those of you watching live. I like that. It, it's a lot of fun. I, I definitely love doing it. So y'all can comment, man. Make some comments. Tell us where you're at, what you're doing. Uh, got questions. A favorite quote from Sunday. You were uh, an hour and 20 minutes or so, but there was such content that was there. Um, I, I had actually forgotten to take notes and so I, I just got so swept up in what I was listening to uh, so but today I watched it again so that I could prepare myself for the family room tonight and boy what a that's what a, the, what the a beauty of, of live stream and and yes. having everything for free on on YouTube and all that is being able to yes. watch it live and soak in it and then go back and, and start feeding from it uh, I had a lot of fun Sunday, um, especially after having that week off, which was nice. But you know, coming back One and then week you off. feel rusty. I'm rusty. It oh. felt, hey, I felt rusty. You get up there and you're like, ah, do I even know? Well, how to what do about this? when you take five weeks off? Well, hello. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I'm not doing that many. <laughs> right? It takes a minute to get your yeah, gears readjusted, get your bearings back. But uh, well, we're glad to have I you had back. a blast. It was, and I'm looking every week. You I could look tell more that you were having a good time. You could tell you 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 felt it uh, Sunday. I, I like that. I like when it's when it flows out of you, and you can tell there's a connection there. And the, the dialogue. What I'm loving most, as much as anything, is the dialogue that's coming from the house to you uh, and during your during your sermons. It's fun to watch and listen and be a part of. People are loosening up and talking back. I gotta I gotta tell them to talk louder because up here. Can't hear him. Like when I said I was, I was glad to be back or whatever, and it sounded like three people clapped, and then when I saw it on live, right. on live stream, it was loud, and I was like, oh. It, it, yeah. So it's weird that you don't really hear yep. much up here, which is strange. But, yeah, I, it, it was a lot of fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to all of it. I'm looking forward to it's continuing this and then the other stuff that I'm preparing to bring for the beginning of the year and then uh, – one extra end one year, beginning of the year. in December. I'm, I, it, it's a great season. I get to preach twice in December. Once. It was twice, and now, oh. uh, now we're not going on vacation on that day again. So great. I have uh, something Mom. I want to bring. <laughs> Telling Kathy, Mom! You get, you get more time to, to chill. <laughs> um, all right, so 
Jude verses 14 through 16, the Lord comes based off of out, out of uh, verse 14 where it talks about the Lord coming with his ten thousands of, ten, of thousands of angels. And uh, I had a little tagline on it that I obviously didn't say, which about being about righteous judgment. And the whole thing, obviously, if you've been following along in Jude, is the judgment that is coming for everyone, but specifically the judgment that is coming for false prophets, um, which is Wait, a huge problem. We have those around? Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Like, you know, and what's crazier is they exist, but too often we point uh, fingers at the wrong people. So Amen. there's that. And I don't need to dive in on that. You know who you are. Well, maybe you don't know who you are, but what's, I'll dig into it for a minute. <laughs> and I won't name names because it, to me, it's not about defending such and such specific person. My problem is there's so many Christians that they see comments about someone else mm -hmm. and they don't do their own research. They don't listen to a person's... Uh, messages, you know, even more, yes. even more than just one, because anybody can have an off day. Mm -hmm. Anybody can, yes. you know, if you listened to the one message that I preached and I said uh, the one thing from the fog of mine where I, I messed up by saying it wasn't the, the second death in Revelation, if you're watching that and right. you're one of the watchdogs that's on, you know, social media, you'd be like, oh, he's a false prophet and he doesn't know the Bible. Or, you know, hey, I'm human and made a mistake and, yes. and said something in error when I truly meant the other thing, just you know, swept up in the moment and either you get tongue tied or whatever. So it's just crazy. And John Bevere, actually, he just did recently did a podcast with, I think his son, several episodes on false prophets. And they actually talk about Jude quite a bit. And I didn't watch the whole thing because there's a lot to it. And it's mm -hmm. some of them are over an hour long, but he talked about that, that there's so many just like watchdogs yes. now on YouTube. That's, That's like incredible. all they do is focus on looking for something. And if you look for something, you're going to find what you're looking for, even if it's by somebody that's not even a false prophet right. or something wrong. I mean, like we've talked about before, people, when they make up their mind about you, they will hear what they want to hear you see with what, what comes out of your mouth. Yeah, you see what you're looking for, you hear what you're listening for. Uh, I found that one today. I stumbled into the one that you were telling me about. And uh, a guy uh, named, what was his name? Um, Mitch Massard. Uh, came back at the guy and just, you know, he, he gave an impassioned, seriously guy, you know, one thing and you're, you're talking about this guy, Mitch, good job. You, you gave a good comment and I watched it and listened to it and you did it right. Uh, just the watchdog attitude that's going on around, it's just crazy. Well, to me too, what's really annoying and <coughs> uh, frustrating is it's, it's, such a judgmental spirit yes. from pre mm -hmm. people that should be uh, obviously God hates discord and division among the brethren and he doesn't want us to condemn one another like that so if you have a problem with someone you should go up to them and talk to them you should pray to God about it you should you know pray and seek guidance on how to handle it but a lot of the times it's, it's just something that boils down to like personal preference or yes. something like that and then they take it or something, you know, and like I was saying a minute ago, where they don't even, they've never even heard a message from a person. They just mm -hmm. take what someone else said. A little clip. And then they run with their whole opinion off of that. Yeah. And then instead of looking for fruit or praying about it, they just immediately condemn the person and, oh, they're a false prophet mm -hmm. and they're a terrible person and you're disgusting and blah, 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 blah. And they say all this stuff. It's like, dude. You, you're no better than, <laughs> if they were a false prophet, you're kind of no better than, than what they're doing. Like, they're leading people astray. Kind of so are you because your comment's going to lead someone astray by them digging in on that. And you're being super judgmental and condemning them. You're taking place, you're trying to prop yourself up to God's level and be the judge yourself. Well, I, what's ironic about that is that because this, the, the, the title of this series is contend for the faith. So there's got to, there, there is a, a way, a place, and a time for that. And there's also the right way and the wrong way. And you're exactly right. That judgmental, hypercritical spirit of, and I despise that. I've despised that for a long time. By God, we're right, you're wrong, and that's just it. You know, and it's just a super judgmental finger pointing over, and many times they're just absolutely wrong. Yeah, but I'd say wrong. like nine times out of ten, the stuff that I see in the comments talking about people and, and the way they're doing it is, is they're not just wrong, obviously, yeah, 
But then like that, they're so judgmental and yes. condemning. And it's like, you, you're, you're in sin yourself and you need to be repenting of that. Like nowhere did God make you the judge to determine this person's whole eternity because of your preferences against how they dress, how they speak, how they deliver or whatever. Like look for the fruit. And if they're bearing fruit, I mean, my God, they're obviously right. anointed. But... You know, some people, they just, uh, jealousy, insecurity, hatred, whatever it is. I think it's the spirit of this age. It's just a hypercritical kind of a spirit. <clears throat> I want to be right so bad that, that I will demonize you no yeah. matter what. Even if you're right, I'm going to demonize and you. And then it just turns into a giant, like, pot calling the kettle black situation. Mm -hmm. But the other person's not even the pot. They're just sitting there, and th this person's just heaping all of this hatred at them. And don't you think it sometimes it percolates in what we what we call the um, uh, the echo chamber? Yeah. When people get into an echo chamber, that's why it's so critical. Watch who you hang with and who you talk with, because when you get in an echo chamber, uh, man, look out, because then it just starts to percolate, and the next thing you know, everybody's spirit is bitter. They're angry. They were they were something else, but now they've just yeah yeah yeah, and they've talked themselves into this. Spirit, this attitude that they have, it's, it's not a good thing. And then it just turns into a ticking time bomb mm -hmm. where, you know, you, you've got all that bitterness and resentment and the judgmental attitudes all in one place. And, you know, yeah, you're, you're having a blast amongst yourselves talking about someone else. There you go. And eventually you're just going to turn on each other and the whole thing, your whole ministry is just going to implode upon itself. Galatians said and you bite like, and devour gosh. one another. Yeah. Like that's, it's that's just a coming. time bomb. And yeah. it's, it's, I, I have found myself the deeper that I'm pushing and pressing in with God and the, and the further that I'm getting in my faith and my walk is everything like that like the the sin that i see like the problems that i see with with judgmental attitudes or pride or lust or bitterness or just all of those things you look at it and you're just like man it's just sad it just it eventually it becomes it it doesn't make me really like as angry anymore like there's some stuff obviously that's frustrating i'm not going to say i don't get mad at things because i'm human but the other aspect of it is now it just begins to, and I've prayed constantly, God, grieve me for what grieves you. And, and when you pray that way and you seek God that way, it's just you start to see um, just sin. And you just start to see it as the symptom of sin. And it's not just a bitterness and all, it's not just resentment and it's not jealousy and it's not, you know, this and that. You just see the sin and you're like, man, it's just, it's sad that these people are dealing with it. And they don't even realize it. Yeah. So they don't know to seek repentance. And the scripture, Psalm 133. You know, I wrote it on a piece of tape and put it in several different places around. Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. That's where the Lord commands the blessing. If we could just get the church, get the people in one mind and one accord, the Pentecost can happen again. The healing, the miracles, the deliverance, all of that, just unity. Amen. Well, that's what's crazy, too, because Pentecost was, uh, hello, Nicole, I'm guessing that's um, somebody new, so that, you know, glad to see you. I see Mitch and Amanda, it looks like somebody that's, that's somebody they know, so I just want to say hi. Um, Pentecost, with the divided tongues of fire, that was the reversal of the Tower of Babel, and I've preached about that in mm -hmm. whatever sermon I preached, I think it was on Pentecost Sunday. Um, but when you think about that, and it's all the tongues coming back together and uh, everybody around was hearing it like so it would be like us sitting here speaking in yep. English but somebody in uh, you know China hears it in Chinese somebody in Japan hears it in Japanese that would be essentially how it was happening yeah. there they heard it in their own language and so then when we get the the discord among the brethren and the disunity, it's its turning into people essentially trying to reverse the reversal of Babel and make it to where we're all just back again, not talking to each other. Come on. And you have all of the uh, denominations that just want to fight each other because we think our denomination's right and your denomination we're is right. wrong. You're and we wrong. think we're doing it right and you're doing it wrong. And then we just end up fighting each other instead of contending for the faith and chasing Come after on. the lost. We spend so much time 
fighting each other instead of literally just doing what Jesus said and going and making disciples. And then we can jump into the rabbit hole of, okay, well, we're going and making disciples like Jesus said, but we do that better than you do. And you're not discipling people correctly and you don't have this program and you it's don't have exhausting. this program. And it's just, it's, it, I mean, it's people. It's exhausting. We love to have some type of system, even within our heads, some type of hierarchy mm-hmm. to where I can tell myself in my alone time, I'm doing XYZ better than you're doing XYZ. I felt like for many times over the years that, that, you know, when I was the lead here, that this church fails in so many areas, and that's one of them. But then you come back to realizing that uh, it's never been about a formula. It's never been about A, B, C, D. Other, other denominations do that so well. A, B, C, D. They got a class for everything. I've always felt like, well, we don't have that. We don't do that. But one of the things that we grow in around in here is just community. We, we do our best to keep people in the word, keep people loving one another, keep people serving one another. That's what we do. That's how we do it. And that's, that's, I think that's good enough. So comments. You started with a quote, a bunch of quotes. You started off, man, you were quoting several people at one time. Two things we fear losing, comfort and certainty. Where that was, was that? from uh, oh, is that the one? Yeah, the one that Kelsey put. The, the fear losing the most are, are certainty and comfort. And if the church is bred on a diet of self-help books that try to convince us that God's intention is to make, us, is to make our lives as smooth as possible, we'll be, we'll be suckers in a hostile world. I mean, I, I read that when she posted it. Yeah, and she I sent me... I don't remember the name of it now. It's somewhere in my text, but because I had asked her and she sent me, it was from some book. And I don't even know how she found the quote because we don't have that book, but now I want to get it. And I mean, it's just, you know, nowhere in the Bible, which is hilarious, but this is how the American Christianity is. Nowhere in the Bible does Jesus call us to be comfortable. Mm. Nowhere. Nowhere does he say, hey, life's going to be easy. It's going to be fun. He, he literally in tells us that. In this world, you will have tribulation. You're going to have trials. You're going to have tribulation. John 16, People will hate you on account of my name. I mean, like, that's why well, I think when I said it, when it I was happens. like, oh, good marketing. We get surprised when it happens that people hate you or they, they have an attitude about you. He said it. He said it. I mean, you look to it like the, the history of the early church, and, and it was... Um, I think Nero in Rome, when they got to the point where when things started going wrong in some aspect, they started blaming it on the church. That way people would get mad (laughs) at Christians. And then you have Nero that when he threw parties, he would literally light Christians on fire as a human candle to light the parties. I mean, you look at, uh, who was it? Isaiah was sawn upside down in half, I think. Um, in two. In, yeah. And then uh, Peter hung upside down and crucified. And it was like all of these people. Uh, my favorite is just the simple one of our whole belief is is based on a God that came down as a man and died for our sins. But we think we're just going to have it easy. I mean, the whole firstborn of creation mm-hmm. of our Christianity, where we mm-hmm. are founded in our faith, was murdered mm-hmm. for it, for being God. And we Servant think we're just going to be super comfortable. I'm Servant like, is not greater than the master. I love what the thing you pointed out when you did the sermon on uh, the sower of the word during the uh, revival night. 75% rejected the greatest preacher who ever preached. Literally God. That's a powerful statement. I mean, you couldn't have, you have the word preaching the word. And, and he tells 75%. you 75% of people is going to reject it. down. That. So when you think about it, you know, you have, you, you get into a heated moment here and they bump you on TikTok or you get a negative comment during the week on the thing, or, you know, it happens in church. Sometimes people get, they zip up their Bible and they just huff out the door. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love what you said Sunday. If you walk out, hold your finger up in the air so we won't think you're mad. <laughs> and then That's if you a... are, just hold it up anyway so <laughs> we won't believe it. Somebody did, but they held up the wrong finger. <laughs> That's not true. Uh, it's, it's, uh, well, no. Thanks for the comments, Kathy. Uh, you're you're always watch. on She's point going. with all of it. You, man, you, got, you listen, you take great notes. Everybody in YouTube, look at Kathy's notes over there. man. That, just, I'm going to dig in on that. We have been focusing more on politics and societal issues rather than on Jesus Christ. Man, and I've honed in on that at least the, t- the last two times of preaching. 
Mm -hmm. As soon as I bring up politics or Kamala or oh, Trump, yeah. you will get the loudest roar in yeah. the room. And as soon as you drop some big theological bomb or something else that should make your baby jump and make the Holy Spirit within you just want to roar, mm -hmm. you get crickets. And it's like, man, do you see where our priorities are so messed uh, up? The, con the thing that you said, <coughs> and I wrote it down, the conflict in church, 39% are in conflict over change, 12% over doctrine, 8% over politics. Are you Those serious? Those numbers are so backwards. Right? Almost half. We should be fired up about our doctrine. And that should sure be that the most important. We're biblically correct rather than, oh, you changed this, you changed the locks, you changed the color of the bathrooms. Who really cares? At the end of the day, does, does that matter? Does that matter? matter? Right. As long as, like, I could see if you were upset at change, if the person that was coming in behind... Like, if you were stepping out, and I was coming in, and I was just super, like, heretical or wrong or just mm -hmm. preaching something, like, so off the wall, right. which, obviously, accountability, it would get shut down. But it was like, how do you get mad at change that is... is for the good? Uh, right. You know, it's... it's We get upset at the... Which, you, you see it in every aspect of society with change. Mm -hmm. The minute something changes... I don't if it's like not, it. I mean, you look at it, so like you have the St. Augustine news page on Facebook, and the minute someone posts, um, Kelsey said the book was Being the Bad Guys, How to Live for Jesus. Uh, it's a red cover. But you see it on the St. Augustine news page if you follow it, which is filled with so much tox toxicity. Bless their hearts. But it's like, if, if someone posts, oh, here's another housing development that's going in right. such and such area, Everybody loses their minds, and there's all these people freaking out over the growth and this and that. But, man, if you go on there and, like, I remember actually this specific example. Somebody was like, how would everyone feel if a Krispy Kreme came to St. Augustine? Boom. Everything was positive. <laughs> Let's and, go. And was, yes, we would love that. And it's like, dude, did we not see, like, yeah. we hate change if it's something we disagree with because yeah. of our personal preferences. And, and I get... The traffic and overcrowding and growth, but anything that is alive mm -hmm. grows. And the other side of it, and I was talking to the guys that I met with the school that's coming up behind us. If if something is not growing and people are not moving to it, then right. it's just dying out. There's a problem. And then what happens? That's how you end up with ghost towns. That's how you end mm -hmm. up with places that you drive and the population is down to like 900 people. That's because nobody moved there. And eventually they just all die out. So, <laughs> Well, I think people, they, they, their, their double standard is, uh, after I get here, I don't want anybody else to come in. Yeah. Well, you came and we're glad to have you here. Let's keep growing. Let's accommodate one another and let's just make this thing the best we can. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm excited about that. That's going to be a, a great development right around the corner from us. It's going to be good. Looking forward to that. Uh, another couple of comments, if I, if I can, before I forget. I wrote down um, what you in this series, you're talking about Jesus is addressing a group who was a threat to the church in this, in this particular sermon that you were doing. Um, they were creating division. They were creating chaos. That's who G the Jude was addressing. And that's yeah, and actually we'll be diving more in if you know with just following the passage because Sunday will be um, what was this fourteen sixteen Sunday will be seventeen to nineteen and diving more into like division and stuff like that. But you know that's that's what Jude is talking about with the false prophets, and you can look at the same thing in Second um, Peter where Jude and Second Peter are incredibly similar that. Um, they think one influenced the other, and you can. There's kind of evidence for both both ways, but I think I even um, somewhere I went was uh, was the first. I went first Peter. I went one of the Peters, and it was talking about how um, with Titus. Or no, it wasn't that. It was Galatians. Duh. With Titus, them trying to push for circumcision when Titus was converted because you had that group that still believed that they yeah. had to be circumcised. And, and, and actually, when you go into Romans, 
Uh, I was listening to that this morning. You go into Romans and Paul talks about how was Abraham counted righteous before or after circumcision? It was before Before. circumcision. That was just the sign. That was the seal. And that's why in Christ we are, we are, you know, gifted the circumcision of the spirit because the spirit has became the seal for us. So that's why we don't have to have those things. Mm -hmm. It's just you get those different groups of the false prophets where, you know, you have the ultra legalistic ones that you have to follow blah, 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 and keep doing this and keep doing that and then you have the other ones that they completely abandon the law and they think we don't have to live with with morality or anything like that it's just oh you have grace so um you know since i'm saved spiritually it doesn't matter what my body does kind of thing Mm -hmm. so in contending for the faith uh, one of the comments that you made that i really honed in on us. You need to know what God is for and what God is against. If you're going to contend for the faith, uh, because if you, and I was trying to remember the wording of it, you said, because if you don't know one or the other, you will, if you don't know it, you'll do both. If you don't know both, you'll do both. That's it. If you don't know both, you'll do both. And that's, that's the problem a lot with the American church, the state of American Christianity right now is you have the churches that skirt around the hard topics because um, we're too afraid to make people mad. Mm-hmm. We're too afraid of, you know, what will happen to my reputation. You know, I've built up this big platform. If I say this, I'll get canceled. Mm-hmm. I'll get shut down. You know, and then right then you're going against God's word where you shouldn't be concerned about the opinions of man but being mm-hmm. fearing God. So then you have that aspect where I know what God is for. God is love and God loves me and he loves me as I am and he accepts me as I am, but then they don't preach about sin at all. So then we have turned that into getting twisted to now it's, well, God loves everything about me and it doesn't matter what I do. He just accepts me as I am and I don't know about sin because my church doesn't preach about sin. So... You know, they're living in a, in a gay relationship or a gay lifestyle or a, uh, they're living with their girlfriend, they're living with their boyfriend, they're, they're uh, watching porn every night and all that, and they don't know anything about it because their pastor doesn't say anything about and it. people cringe when you bring that up. I mean, I, I, I know that to be a fact um, because I, you can feel it. And even even in, in, in our house, and but we're growing through it. We're getting more comfortable with it. You, you said, and I wrote it down word for word, <coughs> churches are too pathetic to call out sin. And that's true. Um, so don't back off of that. And it's so real that when you bring up specifics, like if you talk in vague generalities, nobody gets nervous. You know, there are certain things that are just never going to be right, and God calls them wrong, and we shouldn't be doing those things. But when you put a name on that thing and you say, God does not approve of a gay lifestyle, boy, you can feel the... You can feel the tension, mm-hmm. but don't back away from that because the truth is what sets people free. That's the only way to get free. I mean, if you if you don't call out sin, mm-hmm. how do you know you're sinning? And we think in the in the in the pulpit sometimes you think, well, if I say that, it's going to offend them and they're going to get mad and they're going to leave and I'm never going to be able to reach them because how would you? That's limiting the ability of God and the Holy Spirit. It's quenching. That's literally. Yeah. That's what. I, that's what the Come whole on. thing of it is. There is when you stand up, especially preachers specifically, and you know what, not even just preachers, Christians, period, because Mm -hmm. we're supposed to go out into the world and proclaim and preach the gospel to all creation. Uh, That's everybody, not just your pastor. So I'm not not even going to limit it to pastors. When you start skirting around sin and being afraid to call it out, you begin to accept sin, and then you won't call it out because you're afraid of, of offending someone. Mm-hmm. And Jesus was not afraid of offending anyone. John the Baptist was not afraid of offending yeah. anyone. That's why they died for their beliefs and mm-hmm. their faith, <clears throat> because John the Baptist, he calls out Herod and, uh, you know, being in a relationship mm-hmm. with his brother's wife. To his face. And to his face. And it, it caused his death. Mm-hmm. And then you have Jesus who, you know, he is God. And he starts coming out and saying it and, and calling them out. I mean, they both call the uh, Pharisees brood of vipers. I mean, you imagine how offensive that was. They didn't care. Mm-hmm. But somehow we have become so yeah. soft and pathetic that we care about what someone thinks. Come on. And then we have effectively, whew, that just came to me. We have effectively, when we start getting scared of the opinion of man, the opinions of man have become our God. Mm -hmm. And we're no longer fearing God, we're fearing man.
Stay on that. From my heart to yours, as your, as, your, as your dad and the father of the house, stay on that. And don't be afraid to specifically name names and call it by name because I, that makes it more, much more real. Uh, you've many times in here um, recently, in the last few months, called out uh, couples that are, that, are, that are living together. Uh, and you don't back away from it. I mean, you speak that. I mean, I don't know how long it's been in the church since that's happened. People just, they, they give that vague generality. They, you know, talk about what we should do in marriage is God's plan and all that kind of stuff. But when you specifically say, hey, this is just not the, the right way to live, uh, God is against that, then it just takes the veil off and it makes you come face to face with it, conf- confront it, and look straight at it. So so keep and it that's, up. That's how you get led to, yeah, right there, Jason, conviction. Uh, that's how you get led into not just conviction. Mm-hmm. That's how you get led into repentance. Don't if your pastor, Amen. if your pastor is not calling out your sin, and there's obviously a right way and a wrong in way love. to Speaking do it, in, doing know, it in love. Truth. You don't, you know, go to a gay pride event and you're like, "Hey, you're all sinners. You're all going to hell." That's that's not going to win a single soul to Christ. Just you have to do everybody. things in love. Now, love is not being silent. Love is calling it out because. And, and, you know, the the age-old analogy or illustration of if your child is running towards a cliff, you're not going to be like, hey, don't do that, or just not say anything. You're going to be freaking out and chasing after them Mm -hmm. and trying to grab them and, you know, tell them and screaming at them, but you're doing it in love because you love that person. You don't want them to die, and it's just, I mean, that you cannot, we can't shy away from from calling things out. It's very courageous. Uh, and it's uh, and I, I tell you this all the time, but it's very rare. It's courageous, but it's very rare in our church culture these days that pastors, preachers do that. Uh, there are certain ones that do, but then but the overall, the overall in general is that they, they shy away from it. They try to find a way to get around it and not to say it and not to call it directly by name. I'm proud of you for doing that. You talk a lot about identity. Uh, but, oh, back to that. I'm coming back to that. But, uh, you know... When you when you get specific about a thing, people lose their minds. They start going nuts about it. For for instance, like right now, there is in this new Congress or whatever that's going on. There's a guy, a man, who is uh, calling himself a woman, and now there's the, we're back to this debate about which bathroom he's going to use in Congress. They, you know, the members of Congress don't want him to be in the ladies' restroom because that should be reserved for them. And now we're back to this discussion again that when they're saying, you are biologically a man. Women should have their own space. They should not be subjected to, I don't want him going in there when my granddaughters are in there. I don't want a man walking in there right behind them. But when you call it out specifically, people start losing their mind about it. And I think then is when you find out what people truly believe. Yeah, they believe in um, feeling good about themselves and having others try to placate like them. everybody. You cannot you placate everybody. <clears throat> no, you you can't. Anything in life, you cannot please every single party no. of anyone. And the moment you, you start any, trying anything, to, you lose yourself. You you have. Uh, Everything. I mean, it, you make a bowl of popcorn, and someone's going to want more salt. Someone's going to want less salt. Somebody's not going to want popcorn at all. You can't please yeah. every single person. Some, you know, you you come up and, hey, we got movie night, and we made popcorn and hot chocolate. Well, how come you don't have water? Why don't you have this? Why don't we have this snack? And it was like, it, can you just be happy for what you have? Right. But you know, like that, like. It, you are a biological male. You're a biological female. There's no changing that. You can't change your genes. You can't change your DNA. You can cut things off and add things on uh, with surgery. That, that doesn't change anything. In 100 years, when someone digs up your bones, they're going to say man or female. And that's it. By your pelvic. By I mean, pelvic. they're not going to go... I see Kathy Janet. This one, Kathy, that was right. Kathy Murray, one of the things that you said that we're taught to be a peacemaker, not a peacekeeper. Yes. I sat there on the front row and went, hmm. And that was Jesus' words. Blessed are the peacemakers. You don't keep peace. You have to make peace. Come on. You cannot keep peace. Just like that. You can't, you can't be a peacekeeper because you can't have peace with everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, let, we'll just go to the top of the class. God is love. That also means God has hate. Right. Because you can't love without hating. God hates sin. He loves us. He hates sin. So right there, you can't keep peace without also having mm-hmm. war. I mean, you can't have one without having the other. But being a peace maker is doing everything within your power to make things right. Mm-hmm. But 
that means you can't keep the peace because you you just can't flat out you can't please everyone. There's no matter what it is, somebody's going to be upset. That's just the reality of the situation. That's why you have this whole thing with humanity of you either are saved or you're not saved. There's no in between. You're pregnant, either going you're either to heaven or you're, not or you're going to hell. That's in the only two choices. You have one side or you have the other. You can't meet in the middle. Mm -hmm. That's just not possible. So you're supposed to be going out and trying to make peace. You can't mm -hmm. keep peace. And the truth is one of those things that I think is one of the dividing lines. I mean, where you stand on that contending for the faith. I love that phrase in the book of Jude. I wrote to you to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. When you stand on what you know is right and what you know is true, they might not like it, but they will respect it. I mean, I've had people that don't agree with me at all in Christianity, but they admire your stance on certain things because that's your faith, that's what you believe. Continue to stand on that. Uh, you talk a lot about identity and, and what that means uh, in, in, in everyday life. Um, where did you start digging in on that? Is it just because of the culture and where we are? In um, I think it started with me struggling with just identity things and not like a, like a gay or straight thing. I mean, I know what I am, but there's, uh, you know, you, you, you go through life and you... I think we all have that stage where you're trying to find your personality and, and who you are. And everybody, to some degree, wants to be like. Nobody goes through life and just wakes up and like, man, I want yeah. everyone around me to hate my guts. Nobody wants that. You, you want to have a relationship with someone, mm -hmm. even if that someone is just Jesus, which is obviously the most important relationship you can have. So I've dealt with my things of trying to find out who I am and in, in, in trying to fit in with this crowd or trying to fit in with that crowd and trying to be, you know, something that you're not. And it's only until you just buckle down, find who you truly are, who God made you, not who you think you are, because that's where you okay. slip into the demonic of, oh, well, I think I'm supposed to be a girl, or I think I'm a gay, or I think I'm lesbian. No, that's a demon telling you a false identity. Mm -hmm. And that's my whole thing is, because there's so much of it now with you have... Man, to every degree, you have you know the uh, the whole alphabet soup thing mm -hmm. of the gender spectrum now, where you can identify as numbers or a stuffed doll or a can of beans if you want. Nowadays, it's just anything is on the table essentially. It's uh, to me, it's all just an identity crisis mm -hmm. because our identity boils down to being in Christ. You're either in Christ or you're without Christ. So that's the two identities. Mm -hmm. And when Satan can get you to re to mm, not realize, but when Satan can get you to think that you're something you're not, that's when you get your identity to being without Christ. And he wants to uh, convince you that you can't come to Christ, that you don't need Christ, that you can be happy without Christ, that you can be X, Y, Z, that you can be gay and still have Christ. As long as he can twist your belief of Jesus into being adding on other things that aren't supposed to be there, his job is, is one. He's, he's got your soul. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in society where you have furries and you have the LGBTQ and all of these just literal identity issues and that's going to make a lot of people mad and newsflash, I don't care. Um, you have all of those identity, it's just identity issues and I think the generation that's coming up now, I mean, the, 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 the whole focus for so many people is, is likes and mm -hmm. comments mm -hmm. and subscribers. They live for it. On social media, they live, for, and it's like they literally they get high off of that. And you they can do. go on endorphins. You yeah, you can yeah. go on um, TikTok or Facebook or whatever, and, and you can watch reels. And some of them mean th there's there's nothing. They provide nothing. There's no entertainment. It's literally just nothing. But as long as it gets a reaction, mm -hmm. it gives them their dopamine hit. Yes, and so their whole identity is That's how can exactly. I get a reaction, and, and it turns into it doesn't matter if it's a good reaction as long as it's attention. Mm -hmm. So they're just seeking attention through false identities, <clears throat> and they're just so focused on all of the wrong stuff instead of just focusing on yeah. Jesus and finding who God made them and intended them to be. Confusion, so much confusion. God is not the author of confusion, so that tells you where it's rooted and where is it coming from. Chameleonization, people, they are chameleonized constantly 
uh, different people, and you know, even the apostles did it. You know, at one point, the, the apostles, Peter was behaving a certain way with this group, and then yep. another way with another group, and Paul called him to his face and said, hey, that's not who you yeah, are. Did that wrong. And then he repented of that yes. and figured out he was doing it wrong. So, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it permeates it's, and invades it's sad. everywhere. It's sad. I see it. People not knowing <coughs> who they are. Uh, I love that. And whenever you, whenever you start talking about identity, um, I, my ears perk up because it's so important to know who you are and what you believe. I know who I am and what I've believed in, and I know that I know. So. And that's why it's so important to find your identity rooted in, in Christ. Christ. Yeah. That the whole thing that pops up in my mind with that is the story of the guy that, excuse me, builds the house on sand. And when a storm comes or whatever comes, it just washes it away. But when you build your house, your identity on Christ, the solid rock, the solid foundation, mm -hmm. that's when you find out who God actually made you to be. Yeah. And, you know, the devil loves to hold uh, things you walked through and things you went through in your past against you to where it becomes... Oh, you know, you're just a drug addict. You're just an ex-drug addict. Mm -hmm. You're just an ex-alcoholic. You're an ex-prostitute. You're an ex-stripper. You're an ex-gay person. You're an ex-lesbian. You're an ex-this and ex-that. You used to do that. And he holds it. He tries to hold it against you. But the minute you uh, repent of it and you take ownership of it and you hold it and be like... This is who I was without God, but this is who I am with God. The devil can no longer hold it over your head because you've got it in your own hands. Mm -hmm. So we've got to get people to realize their identity and also get them to realize that the things that they've gone through previously in life and in their past was all to build them up for their purpose. Mm -hmm. You think of uh, Moses, who born, obviously, a Hebrew, and is raised for a few years as a Hebrew, so he has that little bit of foundation of his people. Then he goes into Egypt, and uh, as Pharaoh's, mm -hmm. um, Pharaoh's daughter's son, or stepson, and he gets taught from the best education. He learns their language in addition to his people's language, and he learns all of this other stuff. So now he has both sides of the coin. He knows how each side works, each side's identity, how the government and all this works. And then he messes up, and now he's a murderer, and he thinks, oh, I'm a murderer. So he flees. Mm -hmm. And then what is he for the next 40 years? He's shepherd. literally a shepherd. Mm -hmm. And then when he goes back to rescue these people, he knows how their government works. He knows how they think. He knows their language, their language. Lingo. He knows how every aspect of everything works within Nothing their society, wasted. and he knows how the other side of society works from his people. And then, what is he called to do after God uses him to lead the people out of Egypt? To be a shepherd of the flock. Literally every single thing that he went through, good yes. and bad, were all used for God's purpose, to get the people is out wasted. and rescued. Nothing is wasted. It's all a part of the plan. It's all a part of your identity. Even the stumbles, uh, even the mistakes, the, the arrests, the problems... The failures, they are all a part of it. And God, that's what I love about redemption. You know, the, the power of redemption. God is able to redeem everything uh, and use it for his glory. Uh, it just, it, it's amazing. So in your worst moments, don't think that it's over. Uh, there's something else that's being being done. There's something else being forged and happening in all of that. And we always, you always, when people hear the testimonies, and, and not to downplay like lesser testimonies and I, mm -hmm. I don't have another term that I could use for that so I don't mean it's like lesser my mom worse. was a saint her whole life so yeah and that's like that's great but then when you hear the story <laughs> of someone like Jason or, or Tammy where they were just like neck deep in just this mm -hmm. dark uh, sinful time of this the devil trying to get a hold over their life and trying keep kill them, them and kill them mm -hmm. and then you see them find the light and find their identity in Christ that testimony I mean that's it's so powerful when you yes. take that you literally you take the power out of the devil's hands mm -hmm. by not allowing him to hold the, the past over your head anymore and it's like man we all love hearing those kinds of testimonies mm -hmm. and it's like yeah like granny's as powerful as it is but it's as like it okay is. You were a saint your whole life. That's awesome. But look at, like, you know, like the yep. prodigal. Like, this dude left everything behind and got way down in it but God. Pulled him out. Amen. And it's just in that and where it's just all a testament to God's grace and his mercy and his patience Amen. and his loving and his kindness and his power all in order to bring glory to him. Amen. It's, it's a beautiful thing. God is good. What's coming up Sunday? Sunday is... 
uh, verses 17 through 19. Um, I don't know the title yet, so whatever, and hopefully I'll remember to even say it. But uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, I was reading some, I'm actually really excited from where I was, um, I was just up this morning doing my, my morning prayer. And then started reading and then just started digging into other things and following a rabbit hole. And at first I was like, man, I'm, I'm kind of all over the place here. And then I realized everything I was reading was directly connecting to Jude in the verses that are coming up. So I was like, can I get ahead of you? Just to ruminate. Since it's the family room, this is for you guys. 17, 18, 19. But you must remember, beloved, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you, in the last time there will be scoffers following their own ungodly passions. It is those, these, who cause divisions, worldly people devoid of the Spirit. <laughs> Buckle up. Don't you like, man, the, the more I am, I am loving the way that God has led me to preach in this way. Um, and just taking our time and just walking through it and just diving in deeper and deeper into the Bible. To me, I'm, Amen. I'm having an absolute blast of a time. It's obvious. It's obvious. And we're enjoying it with you. Uh, keep it up. But it's yeah, almost like you were called to do this. That's crazy, isn't Even it? Even if you were unqualified. Unqualified to the 10th degree. Completely unqualified. A few more that's years. That's exactly why God called me to do it. Maybe a few more years. You know, yeah. You know, as, as soon as I finish school and get a degree, and then I go back and get another degree and also have 10 years experience under my belt. Man, yes. that's crazy that God didn't do any of that to anyone he called in the Bible. <laughs> he calls David to be king while he's a boy. He said, go. And yes, sir. You say like, yes. It's, you just say yes, amen, and go get it done. You just. It, it, it sounds, I love the uh, the raw, unfiltered, uh, and I. Oh well, back on that. That right now, I think, is resonating with more people than anything else right now. Y'all, back me up on this in the comment section. Uh, in this house and the people that are watching, that is resonating more with people right now than anything else. I mean, I've done this for 42 years, and I've got a certain level of achievement at what I do and polish and how I present and that kind of thing. You and I are nothing alike in, in doing that. That doesn't make me right, you wrong, you wrong, me right. That makes it just like you are who you are, and I'm proud of you for following that. But there are people in this place that are listening and watching right now that are saying the very reason I'm coming week after week after week is because of the guts and the passion and the courage and the raw unfiltered truth that you just spit out. Uh, Calling my name, Hoss. Not going to use his last name. Just maintain the anonymity. He loves that, man. And he was raised rough and tumble, man. He was raised rough as H-E double hockey sticks. <laughs> but he's like, man, I just love somebody who just spits it out. And they don't try to candy coat it and make it sound better and all that kind of stuff. So it's working. Well, I mean, the whole thing is the whole thing is that. Like what we said earlier, you're either you're saved or you're not saved. Mm -hmm. And skirting around things and tiptoeing around little subject is not gonna get you saved. Right. Uh, and if it does, I mean great, but is it going to lead you into being a mature disciple? Mm -hmm. There's no telling. Probably not because you're going to be too busy still feeding on the milk mm -hmm. instead of diving down and getting to the meat and maturing and getting deeper in your faith. You're just you're not going to have a very deep faith. Like you might have faith, yes, and be saved, but mm -hmm. nothing is going to become of it. Uh, and, and, you know, like I just think of, you know, John the Baptist. They didn't go out there to see something they what could did see, you go see in the city. shaken by the wind? They did. Nope. They could. They could see the same. I mean, you think of all the Pharisees and all the other teachers of the law and all the priests in their robes and all that. They could have got that into the city. I want to go see that guy. They went out into the wilderness because he was just preaching the mm -hmm. truth boldly and wasn't afraid to call it out. To just literally talk to people, uh, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I mean, you're calling people out. Hey, you're a <coughs> sinner. You need to repent because God is coming and. They That's the saved. message that and needs to be heard that right is now. How it has to be. So. We're standing on the brink of, of the world in chaos, all the kind of stuff going on. We don't need somebody up there trying to tell us five points about how to be more prosperous in life. We need somebody to tell us time is short. We're running out of time. You need to get right with Jesus. And those of us who are already right with Jesus need to be taking that message out to this community and sharing it everywhere we go. Time is short. God is coming. I mean, like that. Need to be There's right. nothing wrong with talking about money and how to steward money and all that kind of stuff in the church 
Right. Um, the problem is, like, to me, how my brain works. If, if I want to learn how to work on a car, I'm going to go ask a mechanic. If I'm going to learn how to handle my money and make more money, I'll ask uh, an investment or a banker or an Somebody accountant did and all that stuff. If I want to learn how to get my soul right with God, I'm going to look for a preacher that's not afraid of man, somebody that will tell me to my face, hey, this is what you need to do. Not that it's like a formula kind of thing, but, you know, hey, you're, you're doing this, you're, you're, you're doing this, like you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're correct here and here and here, but this kind of area of your life still needs a little bit more work. So uh, I, that's just my thing is we've, we've got to quit being little pansy sissy people in the pulpit and just no speak the can. truth. That's a lot nicer of a word than I could have said. <laughs> Amen. So Sunday morning, Jude, uh, episode six from Contend. Uh, we will be here at 10 a.m. 9.50. Early. 9.45. Come on. 9.45. Man, let's start making the change in the culture. I'm telling you, we're watching it getting more and more people earlier. Yes. And eventually it's going to get to the point where even if you're just trying to get here by 10, you're going to be like sitting on the floor, which is fine. You want to sit on the floor. Tanya and Gabby sit on the floor Mm -hmm. and they take notes. I got no problem. They want to come up here and sit I wanted to do that, but when I lean on the seats, it slides back. (laughs) <laughs> just buckle them down but yeah that's that's where Let's we're going it. so 950 945 be in the house 945 send out an invitation um there, somebody sent you this week and said they got five family members coming with them or five yeah friends. actually well, it's multiple i know tony's got a young guy coming that's in guy. a motorcycle club and he's searching for god which is exactly what we're looking Come for on. somebody that's lost and out in the world that's trying to get back to Christ or just to Christ because they haven't been with him before. And uh, Haas, who you mentioned earlier, I heard yeah. they're bringing five people. Unchurched. And that's, it's a, and I'm going to say it and I'm going to shut up and I'm going to go home. <laughs> if your church growth strategy is to invite other people from other churches to your church, you're doing it wrong. That's not really growth. You're doing it wrong. You, you're doing it wrong. Stop. Don't do that. And to people who are in other churches that are doing it that way, stop it. You're doing it wrong. You you should be reaching out for people who are unchurched, people who are prodigals, people who are atheists and <coughs> agnostics and who are lost, who are looking for God, who don't go to church, who just, you know, you know who they are. You see them at work. They bump into you at work and they're depressed and they don't like the way their life is going. Their marriage is in trouble. Hey, man, why don't you come with me to church on Sunday? I, we can just... We'll just be there together. It's a lot of imperfect people in a place having a good time and just listening to the word. I think you'll enjoy it. And just... Give them a little positive invite and watch what happens. Literally every single person watching, there is someone in your life or that someone, God has already put someone in your life or he will put someone in your life that he wants you to invite to church. Yeah. That he wants you to reach out to. That I mean, literally there's not a single person under the sound of our voice that can say, nope, there's no one. No, there's right. somebody. There's somebody that God has in your life or that he will send you between now and Sunday. Y'all still got the little ask. cards? Yeah, actually, that's a funny thing. When we um, went to Orlando Sunday after church for just a little date, uh, we, we put them out randomly. Come on. if y'all, Why don't we put them in the information center? People can pick up. I know. We, uh, I got to see if we have any We've more. We've got some cards, some invitation cards. You can just take them and leave them in different places. It says, people... join us Sunday, and it has information on the church with a QR code. But, well, I mean, that's the whole thing. Do. The whole thing is to invite the lost. Like, yeah, it's yeah. cool if... The, the growth is not about stealing people from other churches. Now, if people from other churches find that they like it better here because truth is being better preached here and better proclaimed here, cool. Right. I'm not trying to steal people from other churches, right. but if they're not getting fed at your church, then I don't know what to tell you. You should probably just do a better job like God has asked you to do. I mean that in the most loving way possible. The other side of it is we're supposed to be preaching to the lost and getting the lost here. So my whole thing is trying to reach the lost and preach to the lost while simultaneously building up the disciples that are here already. Come and on! them more mature. So it's not that, oh, you're not discipling the people that are already here. No, you should be getting discipled just by being here and learning and going deeper into the Bible with us. But my main focus is Luke 10 or Luke 19, 10. Like Jesus said, the son of man came to seek and save the lost. You didn't. I would hit the microphone. Woo! Oh, slap the table. Slap the computer. I'd probably shatter my laptop <laughs> if I did that right now. Everybody's waiting for that. Amanda, if you do get the cotton candy thing, I'll chip in on it. Let's bring it Sunday. Give it to him during church. <laughs> All I've got, I'll just start throwing big balls of cotton, cotton candy. candy. Cotton this candy. is the sweetest it's going to get here. <laughs> yes, Mitch, we are over because I'm old. It's my bedtime right now. I'm, I'm supposed to be in bed right now. <laughs> That's awesome. You young guys can stay up for an hour and a half and do this. 
<laughs> well, yeah. Uh, so yeah, with that, um, <clears throat> Sunday, I'm letting it catch up because if I hit stop now, uh, it's going to cut it off and miss everything we just said. So uh, yeah, Sunday, week six, come early. Um, I don't think we have anything. Oh, we have the Friendsgiving thing. Saturday. Saturday, uh, the 23rd. So, you know, if you're looking for fellowship time, if come you're on. looking for food, uh, even if you don't have anything to bring, I'm sure there just will come be on. more than yeah. enough. Just come and, and hang out and, and fellowship. You know, don't be afraid to just show up and hang out. That's yeah. we're, we're all here for being family. We're all here for just hanging out and, you know... Um, I love the community that's developing. Loving the community. I, I almost made a post about this, and then I'm leave it. But for a year, I watched <coughs> as our church went through this phase. Uh, people that you love, you know, not loving back, and people walking and disappearing and all that kind of stuff. But now I'm watching this church come flying back together as a community, as a family. Uh, great name, by the way. As a family... It's all of a sudden, they're supporting one another, they're defending one another, they're supporting and loving you, and, you know, it's just powerful to see what God is doing right now. It's a powerful time in our church right now. Yeah, it's, uh, I am, the, the, we had a, we had a hot summer from hell, and now we're, (laughs) now we are, we're moving into, literally, as the season is changing. In the natural, the season is changing in the supernatural, yes, in the spiritual, and we're going into better places, into deeper places. Into and look at God doing things places. like, for instance, if all of this stuff works out like it's like it's going, we haven't had to make a single payment on that land yet. I mean, we were making payment, but we're not making the payment. Somebody else is. Uh, people are, 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 what God is doing, I, I, wait a minute, I don't, I don't want to say that wrong, because <laughs> your giving matters, please give. Uh, but God is doing some miraculous things behind the scenes that we're, we, we don't tell you guys about. But thank God for it. But keep giving, keep supporting, keep loving. Do, do all that you do. You know how you do it. It's a very exciting time right now. Yeah, Very I'm excited. super excited. And the giving is obviously still greatly so important, important to keep the lights on. I would still love to upgrade the cameras. Uh, yeah. Paying the land. And it's not just paying the land. We still have to put a building out there. We want to pay the land off and build the buildings. So that's going to require a millions. Lot. So <laughs> pray for that. Cheap, what are you believing for? We're believing God, God will to provide. Support. Yeah. Uh, and we will reach... Millions. I, Millions. I, I fully believe that this this ministry has nothing. I know somebody's going to take the wrong way. Has nothing to do with me. I just could not care anything about me. Ain't about me. Mm-hmm. I must decrease so he can increase. I, I will fully get out of the way. It is literally all about Jesus, and that's not some false humility. I'm just saying to you know make people feel good about me or anything like that. It it, it ain't about me at all. Don't ever make it about me. Um, but with that Sunday morning. Uh, 9.45, I'm not going to say 10 anymore. We're going to change the time. 9.45. Start starting at 9.30 and everybody will come in at 10 and they'll be like, whoa, what's going on? <clears throat> so with that, we will see you Sunday. And uh, yeah, so come early, come ready, come hungry. And we will see you uh, Saturday as well for the Friendsgiving. Four to six. Here in the building at four to six. You guys have a great rest of the week. We love you. Good night. Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.